happy Tuesday, everyone. It is day one of a new month and there is so much taking place on the avenue. Are you ready? Let's get started. Tomorrow is Ash Wednesday, which marks the beginning of the Lenten season. Lent is the 40-day period leading up to Resurrection Sunday. It is during this time that many Christians choose to observe the season by fasting, strengthening their prayer lives, reflecting on what Christ has done for us, and making sacrifices that will draw us closer to Christ. In observance of the beginning of such a significant time in the church, we are having an Ash Wednesday experience tomorrow, and we hope that you will join us for a time of worship, reflection, and prayer. March is Women's History Month, and we are surrounded by such incredible women in and around Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. For decades, the Women's Guild has held the Audrey H. Lawson Impact Awards Luncheon and Fashion Show, a fabulous event that thousands of Houstonians look forward to attending each year. The luncheon raises funds in an effort to continue the work that is being done on a daily basis to better the lives of individuals through scholarships for students, help for the homeless, housing for the elderly, and other philanthropic projects. During the luncheon, a group of women are highlighted for their significant professional and personal contributions to the Houston community. This year, the event will be held on March 26th, and there are five honorees. I will be sharing a bit about each woman during this month's shows. First is Mrs. Lucy Bremen, who is the Executive Director for the Emancipation Park Conservancy. She is responsible for overseeing the overall strategic operations, funding, improvement, and the programming plan for Emancipation Park. With an extensive amount of experience in community engagement and nonprofit management, she has served as an executive leader at General Electric and in the Department of Strategic Partnerships at the Houston Independent School District. Berman has a result-driven record for building relationships, fundraising, strategic management, and consistently making a positive impact in the Houston community, including the historic Greater Third Ward. Tune in next week as we shine the spotlight on two more Audrey H. Lawson Impact Award honorees. Spring break is right around the corner, and there are always so many things to do in the Houston area for all ages. For those parents with younger, active children who need to burn some energy while also learning and keeping their minds sharp, we have the perfect place for you. One of our fellow church members welcomed us into her world to show us the exciting things that are going on at the Children's Museum. Let's take a look. We're here with Deaconess Dr. Lisa Williams, Director of Gallery Programs here at the Children's Museum. How are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm good. So I can imagine that you have a pretty awesome job here. Um, can you tell us a bit about your position and what you do here on a weekly basis? So first of all, let me say I love my job. <laughs> I am basically manager over all of the educators. So we have educators who are responsible for each exhibit. And within the exhibit, they have to make sure that the programming that we provide are TEKS aligned. And that means that it goes along with what children are learning in school. So um, that's the biggest part of my job. I'm also responsible for what we do online. So we provide videos every day so that children can also learn from home. We started that during the pandemic and we have continued because we know that some people still aren't ready to come back in person. Also, I manage all of the events that we have here at the museum. So um, all the things that we do on the weekends so that children can have fun with characters and with performances are all part of what I do. You all focus a great deal on addressing the community needs as well. Um, what are some of those needs and how is the Children's Museum responding to meet those? So first of all, we do offer free admission to um, our visitors who could not otherwise afford to come to the museum. Our mission statement is that we are actually working with people in an innovative, child-centered way. And so in order to transform communities, we have to do that and meet people where they are. So part of what we do is we have free family night every Thursday from five to eight where people can come in free of admission. We also provide um, buses to schools if they want to bring children on those Thursdays as well. 
Also, um, another thing that we do to help the community is that if people get um, certain benefits, we accept those benefits as their admission so that they don't have to pay. Um, and then we go out to festivals and community related programs. We take our programming to the community. Um, and then uh, just one other thing I just want to mention is that we do do something called um, the basics and that is to help parents um, learn how to grow their baby's brain. So there are so many things that we don't know that I didn't even know as a parent that we're doing now so that when moms talk to their children, like they understand serve and return. If your baby cools, then you say something back and that is communicating. And every time you do that, the neurons in the baby's brain grows. So how can somebody register for that program? So if you go to our website, you will see Basics Houston, and you'll go and you'll click on that. We do um, virtual fun shops, and then we do have some in-person workshops as well. Nice. So the, the things that you were talking about before the Basics program, is that part of your Open Door program? Yes. So, um, and with Open Doors, all the um, community agency needs to do is to go online, register as an Open Door partner, and then they receive free passes for the people within their community that they serve. Are there any qualifications for that? So basically, um, you'll fill out the form, um, but if you really serve the community, that's all we're looking for. We just want to be able to be accessible to everyone. So one of the things that you mentioned when we first started talking was the TEKS Aligned Experiences, um, which stands for Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills. Yes. Um, how have you all, can you go a little bit more in detail about how you all have integrated the TEKS into your exhibits here? So we have 12 interactive exhibits and each exhibit starts with a quintessential question. So for example, one of our galleries our question is how does it work? So we encourage children to go in and figure out how the components work. It's a lot about things that they would need to know in science, like the pulley system. Also, we have a science lab in there where they do experiments. Um, then if you go to our cultural gallery, our quintessential question is how are we different and how are we alike? And so children get a chance to explore a place that they may ne never go, but that they get to experience that culture. So they truly are learning while they're having a great time here at the Children's Museum. That's awesome. Um, in a couple of months, you all have what is known as Sensory Friendly Day. Can you share a bit about what that is, who it's for, and why it's so important? Yes. Yeah, so Four times a year, we offer a sensory friendly or an explorability day. Um, we have great sponsors for that, and the purpose is to be able to support children and families with sensory needs. And so on those days, it is just open on Mondays where we're closed to the public. And the purpose is so that we can close down certain components. We might turn things off or turn down the volume. We offer headphones for loud noises. We offer sunglasses for children who have light sensitivity. We also have vendors that come and those vendors specialize in working with children with sensory needs. So it's a great time, but it's a way that they can enjoy the museum without feeling pressured or feeling like someone's staring at them or the parent even feeling like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm impacting other people having a good time. So those are days that are just for our sensory needs community. Beautiful. Well, I would love to look around. Spring break is right around the corner, and we want the parents and children to really get a look into some of the things that you all have to offer during spring break. You ready? Yes, let's all right, go. All let's go. Now, you know we can't leave this fabulous library without talking about it. I see you have books for all ages, baby's first words, adult fiction. So tell us about this place. So this is actually a branch of Houston Public Library. Visitors can come to enjoy the library as well as the museum. Also, we have our flip bags. You can check those out in the bag. There is a book and activities and all the materials that go with the activity. We also have a keep it version so that parents who like that can keep it at home and use it over and over again. 
Nice. So can anybody just come in here and check out books whenever, even if they aren't a guest of the museum? Yes, even if you are not coming to the museum, but you just want to use the library, it is open during our operating hours. Even the computers? Even the computers. Nice. Is there a limit? What are the details on the computers and the backpacks and everything? The book, the books, how long can someone check the books out? So you check it out and you follow the same system as you would when you go to the Houston Public Library. They'll give you a due date of when it's due back. Even if you have checked your book out from a different location, you can drop it off here at our location. Wonderful. Well, let's let's go out and see what you have at the exhibit section. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, so we are in the famous hallway and anybody who has been to the Children's Museum remembers being able to do arts and crafts, face painting. A few things have changed since then, so. Yeah, so this is our junction hall and kids come here to do their arts and crafts. Um, during spring break, we usually have lots of wearables, so we'll have the Mohawk crown and uh, we'll have games for them to do, so they'll have a great time. Nice, let's keep it moving. All right, so um, the first exhibit is How Does It Work? And that was the one that I mentioned before work. And that is like pulley systems, science experiments. But the one that I really want to get to is our cultural exhibit. And this exhibit actually changes. And so every uh, 18 months or so, we bring a different cultural exhibit. Right now, we're featuring heart and soul. So children get the opportunity to actually Go into the country of soul. Nice. nice. So you said each month is a different culture. No, in, in the exhibit, we change it out every so often, but what we change here in the Junction Hall, we change every week, actually. Okay. We have something called Wonder Weeks. And so those are different thematic units that we do in order to just go along with whatever might be happening. So, um, for example, we might do Black History in the month of February. Um, we also do, um, next in May, we're going to do um, Mother's Day. We do different activities um, like the Book of Mayo. So, we change it based on what's actually happening. And that's awesome. Children get to learn about cultures that they may not have any type of up close connection to ever. So this is, this is great that we have this right here in our community. Yeah. So now we're going to enter the country of Seoul right. and children will get to come here and feel like they really are engulfed into the culture. They get to do some activities. There's a schoolhouse. There's an apartment so that they see the real living lifestyle. Um, and I, it's just one of my favorite places to come. This is so cool. So this is the Taekwondo um, portion of the exhibit where you actually learn how to do some of the stances in Taekwondo. You gonna give us a demo? <laughs> uh, no, ma'am. Wow, this is awesome. Yes, and it actually teaches you how to do it. I mean, I'm old and this is cool for me, so I know children going through here, it's like a total, just in, an amazing experience. Yes. This is our K-pop studio, so children get to dance and sing. You can actually sing along and learn the dance movement. Yeah, it's already recorded, but they get the opportunity to learn these particular moves. So this here is a primary school, and children get the opportunity to see what life is like in a school in the country of Seoul. So I could imagine a great deal of research goes into um, putting together these cultural experiences. How how is there a team of people? Do you actually speak with people from the country? Like what, what is that? Yes, actually there is an exhibit team, and um, sometimes someone in my department um, participates in that. We actually, when this exhibit was created, we actually visited the country of Seoul so that we could really understand what we were trying to do. And um, this is a traveling exhibit, so other museums use this exhibit when it's not here. Okay. Uh, we have a Fort Bend location that's located in Sugarland, and right now in their cultural exhibit, they are featuring Gullah. So it, it talks about the Geechee um, population in the Carolinas. So both, it, 
both museums host a cultural gallery. What's now, over here? This is an apartment and it basically shows you what it's like to live in an apartment in Seoul. So let's take a look inside. So it kind of shows you the different foods that you eat, um, some of the customs that happen, and um, even going into the refrigerator, you see the foods that they uh, consume. So it's really a neat place to come and just sit and enjoy what it looks like to be in an apartment. Now our next exhibit is um, Sights Unseen. And this is an exhibit that changes out. And so right now we are featuring all about eyesight, um, in particular how animals see and how it's common with what humans see. So when you come in here, it's so visual because it's neon and um, it's very interactive. Um, when children come in, they really, really enjoy being in here because they learn a lot about eyesight and some of them come back and they see that their eyes are up there because it records. Oh, cool. Uh -huh. So they, when they see that, they're like, wow, that's me. <laughs> so what are some of the differences and similarities with our eyes, human eyes, and animal eyes? Well, the biggest thing is how we as humans, as well as the animals, adjust our eyesight based on light. So uh, we refract light and so do animals. Really have that night vision. Absolutely, they do. That's the one thing that we don't have, unfortunately. Yeah. And then the last exhibit I want us to see, we have to stop in Kitropolis. Yes, we do. It is the most popular exhibit by far in all 40 years of the Children's Museum that everyone loves to go to. Yes. What is Kidtropolis for those who may have never been here before? So Kidtropolis is actually a city for kids. When you enter the museum, you see a bank card. And with that bank card, you use it to do jobs in that exhibit. There are different businesses. So your mom or your dad needs to assign you something to do. And while you are there, you actually after you're assigned your job, your parent can either pay you money, fake money, oh, fake money. Okay. pay you money, or um, you deposit it into our ATM machines with your card. You preload a little money on your card before you get here so you don't start with zero. Um, but then there are other businesses in there that you can spend money. So you can go to the grocery store. Everybody loves to go in HEV. Um, there's a Nico's Nico's Diner, you can spend some money in there. You can also um, go into our bank, we have a, a Bank of America in there, and when you go in the bank, it teaches you how to not only um, spend money, but to actually save. And so we want to teach kids a little bit about financial literacy, because that is a real life skill. And again, that's just one of those amazing, one of the amazing things about this place is that the children are having so much fun, but they are really learning about day-to-day -day things that will carry them through the entirety of their lives. Yes, our motto is, can your mind come out to play? Love it. So they definitely get that in every corner of this place. Nice. And we are entering Kidtropolis now. Yes, wow. so you see the ATM machines where they can actually deposit or withdraw money. And this is our city cycle where they can learn how um, bicycles work and it can actually be a job. In each uh, business, there are jobs that the child can do and it tells them what to do. This is our new room. No, I love this room here. Yes. There's a teleprompter in there so they can learn how to read off of a teleprompter. Um, they learn what it is to have a green space. Nice. The bank. Yep, the bank where they actually use their bank card. But there are lots of different lessons in there, including the, the small business banking, um, the Merrill Edge um, program that teaches them how to just start a small business, how to invest, how to create a savings plan. So we want, we really do want them to understand those facts. Mm -hmm. 
And then here we have Mock City Hall because we also want to instill in them the importance of voting. Yes. Here we have our famous ambulance. Everybody <laughs> loves to go in there and work on the patient. Forensics lab. We have a forensic lab and in one of our um, upcoming videos, we will have something called um, Punch and Proof. And basically it's a ploy off of law and order <laughs> where children actually get to try to solve something that happened. And so we just filmed that. I can't wait for that to air because kids are going to love it. So where will it air? It will air actually sometime in March. Okay. So they'll they'll enjoy it because it's a scoop off the law. Kids are um, kids, sorry, kids are, the yeah, famous girls. The we famous. Store. Everybody loves to come. So wow. here you can actually go grocery shopping. Um, there are. It used to be where you would go through the checkout line. Now we have made it a self check um, since COVID. So um, even more independence, though. More independence. They scan their own groceries. Um, they also get the opportunity to determine if they have enough money on their car to purchase what it is that they want from the store. If they don't, they have some decisions to make. Yeah. You know, which is real life. So, put something back. Put something back. Exactly. This is our Nico's Nico's Diner. So students can learn how to take orders. They can be a short order cook. They can serve. And so they really um, get the opportunity to understand what it is to be in the service industry. Awesome. So then over here we have our vet clinic. And so they learn a lot about pet care. And um, they learn also about different things that are specific to different types of animals. Okay. And then lastly, we have our Art Academy. We feature a different art project every week in there. Also, there's free art so that they can express themselves. Cool. So what are some of the types of art projects that they have? So um, we've done murals. We've actually done art workshops where a professional artist comes. And uh, like every hour, he'll do a workshop. And it's always with the child and the parent because we are encouraging family growth. Good family bonding. Well, thank you for taking us through this process and through the entire Children's Museum. This has been a phenomenal experience. Children, parents, make sure you all make your way down here to the Children's Museum. Spring break is the perfect time or any day. You know, you can tell you guys are open when. We're open Tuesdays through Saturdays. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. On Thursdays, again, we have our free family night from 5 to 8. Also want to remind everyone that you must pre-register yes. so that you can purchase your ticket in advance. Also, remember to wear Have your fun. mask. Awesome. The Children's Museum has always been such a special place and we hope that you are able to visit soon. For the older children, teens, and even adults, if you've been having a hard time trying to figure out some fun things to do around town, here are some of our suggestions. The Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo is always a great time. Be sure to catch them before it's over. Free Museum Day is every Thursday for most of the museums in the Houston Museum District. You can visit humuse.org for their full schedule. The Houston Zoo offers free admission with a reservation every first Tuesday of the month from September through May. And lastly, try visiting the Downtown Aquarium for an underwater adventure that's fun for all ages. Thank you all for tuning in this evening. Join us next week for a very special episode as we hang out with a few of the friend groups that developed right here at WABC. I'm excited about that one. See you next Tuesday on The Avenue.